Ladies, we've got Abby from the newsroom. Uh, single this week, or are we hooking up? What are we doing? Uh, you know, just working like a like a dog, dog. like a dog. Um, we've got producer Zoe here as well. Um, Good morning. Oh, are we single? Yeah, we're single. Okay, yeah. we're chilling. All right. Uh, and me, who's been <laughs> married several times and has a million children. Okay, let's talk <laughs> girl stuff, shall we? Yeah, I was chatting with the girls, but I think anyone can have an opinion on this one. On the weekend, we were chatting marriage, change your name or not change your name. Ooh, okay. I think these days, most of, I don't have many girlfriends that have gotten married yet. I'm 25, so they're all, it's kind of starting now. Yep. None of them have changed their name yet from my immediate friendship group, but then broadly, I know lots of girls that have, and I'm very interested whether people still think it's a nice tradition or if it's a bit archaic or... I don't know. I think sometimes it's appropriate and it definitely can work. For example... Nice to meet you. I'm Julia Gulia. Julia <laughs> <laughs> So then you become Julia Hart. Um, yeah. It's a really interesting one. Like, when after I uh, split up from my first husband, I kept his name for a long time and mm. that raised a lot of eyebrows. But that was simply because I didn't want to have a different surname to my to daughter. Kid. Yeah. So... But I think if I would... Just let go of the baggy green. Let go of the baggy green, guys. I know it's awesome. I I think in in retrospect, I would have done things differently. Yeah. Yeah. I probably would have reverted to my maiden name. But then I got married again, so that sort of took care of itself. Yeah, are you glad you're an Oddie now and not your maiden name? So glad. What's your maiden name? Williams. 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 I thought it was (laughs) Gulia. What about you, Abs? If you ever get married... Uh, I always thought that I would, to be honest, but mm, I lean towards more so not doing it now. Mm. Why so? Because, I don't know, I just, I like Abby Smith, I just, I like that. Like, yeah, it just, it, nice when you really sit name. down and you drool down mm. on it, it seems odd to give up your name to become yes. a man's. But I, not to be a... Um, insane feminist like I am sometimes but if you're keeping it you're just keeping your dad's name we've always got a man's oh, yeah. name you know? uh, <laughs> oh okay then why don't you just ditch the last name just just one name you could be like Ronaldo I'm or just, something I'm yeah. just Zoe yeah. 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 Ronaldinho hey question for you if yeah. you say if you married Cara yeah. and she didn't take your name would you be insulted um, she's got an interesting very Scottish last name her name is Goonan <laughs> Yeah. Cara there's Goonan. Not, there's not many Goonans around. No. Yeah. So she was in a real hurry to latch onto Hayes. <laughs> Goonan Hayes. Oh, I, would, I wouldn't be against it. What about would you change your last name to be Cara's? To be Goonan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Say it wasn't Goonan. Because um, <laughs> that is another thing that lots of mates have been chatting about with me as well, is the bloke changing their name. Okay. That's a whole different yeah. story. I know someone it? who combined their last two names. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Double barrel. That's yeah. Yeah, that's quite common. But changing it, what, from the uh, male's name to the lady's name, mm. that's interesting. So you'd be Andrew Goonan. Andrew Goonan. <laughs> mm. Andrew, it's got a ring to it. Andrew G. <laughs> <laughs> Producer M, you had an interesting situation. Yes. Um, thankfully, I don't have to worry about this anymore, but one of my past boyfriends... Um, when we were dating, I decided if we were ever to get married, I would not change my last name because he was Dutch and his uh, surname was Von Silicon. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really want to be... Oh, yes. Oh, the Dutch Fonz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was his first name? Kevin. <laughs> You know, that really well-known Dutch Kevin. name. <laughs> oh. Kevin, just cricket, just cricket. What was the inspiration behind Kevin? Do you know? His, I do, actually, because I asked him, like, what is going on here? Uh, his mum really loved Kevin Costner when he, when he was born. <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably in Dances with Wolves. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, it was, think it was actually. Was. 13, 24, 10, were you named after a celebrity? No, we're not doing that. 13, 24, 10, tell us, have you changed your name or have you kept your maiden name when mm. you've gotten married? Have you hyphenated it? Is it the is it the done thing now just to keep your own name mm. when you get married? Mm. Let's go to Helen. Good morning. Good morning. What's your situation, Helen? Uh, I I got married in March, uh, second time round. Uh, so the first time round actually was 1996, and I did take my then husband's surname. Uh, then uh, that didn't work out, so I resumed back to my maiden name. Yeah. And then. For about 10, 12 years and remarried and 
uh, didn't change my name and, and still a Miz and just kept my uh, my maiden name. And my now husband is really supportive of it too. Okay. So, yeah. Helen, do you think maybe because you went through that first situation with your first marriage, you felt a little bit burnt by it and you, you perhaps didn't want to go down that path again? Yeah, absolutely. I, um, I lost myself in that marriage mm. and regaining uh, my maiden name afterwards was really important to me. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I wasn't going to wasn't going to lose that again. Although that was a really good point um, that was made earlier. That ultimately, I just got my dad's surname anyway. But um, it was all a bit too complex changing it to something else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Helen. Thank you so much for the call. Let's go to Vanessa. Good morning, Vanessa. Hey guys, how you doing? Good. Have, have, am I reading this right? Have you invented a new name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. A um, bit of backstory for us. My husband's family name is Hoare, so it's actually H-O-R-E. Um, but when he was born, his parents changed it to Hoare Wood. And kids being cruel, uh, he got teased for being a whore with Wood. Um, and so <laughs> when we got married, I thought... I don't want to be Mrs. Horwood. No. <laughs> um, as much as I love him and I love his family and, you know, their family lineage and everything, I kind of thought maybe it's better if we just make true tradition out the window and go, let's make up our own. So we smushed the two names together and just created our own new family name. Okay. So what was your name? What was his name? And what's the hybrid? So mine was Corbell. Yeah. His was Horwood. We're now Corwood. Oh. Perfect. That works. Yeah. Nice. Perfect. And it's great for him. He only had to change one letter. Oh, yeah. yeah exactly. That's nice. Oh, very nice. <laughs> Better than Horbell. Yeah. yeah. That's like when people. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like Horbell's fun. <laughs> you got options. But, you know, ding a ling for Miss Horbell. <laughs> <laughs> That's like when people get married and they come up with little hashtags for yeah. Instagram, like when they combine the names. Yeah, but that's a thing now, though. That's a genuine thing to yeah. combine your... I mean, news right over, you mentioned it. People genuinely combine the last two names mm. to well, create this new super breed type name. Yeah, there you go. Exhibit A. Yeah. There you are. Interesting. Oh, that's Thank good. you, Vanessa. That was fascinating. Right. I was saying to you guys um, off air that I know a lot of people who perhaps work in media or in the spotlight... And they've gotten married and kept their maiden names because that's how they've built their... So I, I don't want to use the word brand, but that's... Their profile. They, that's how yeah. they've built their profile. And so when they get married, they don't want people to be confused about yeah. who they are. I do wonder if I ever got married, mm. if I was still in this job, whether I'd change it or not. Yeah. Because I guess people, yeah, people know your name, but they also know you. Like, I still have people go, oh, God, you sound really familiar. I'm like, oh, I don't know, because I work in admin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so they know your voice, but, yeah. So when you think about it as well, particularly in big time celebrities, they rarely change their names. No, they For don't. For example, it was not Nicole Cruz after she married Tom Cruise. No, was it? Yeah, always no. Nicole Kidman. It's always yeah. been Miley Cyrus. She wasn't Miley Hemsworth for a while. No, were they married? Yeah, yeah, they yes. were. They okay. did get married. Thank you. It just didn't end well. <laughs> yeah, no, I did not. That's the issue there. Did not. Now maybe they sh- maybe they should have smashed their names together, and it would have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so yeah, like Cyworth. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Kardashian didn't become Kim West when she no. married. Or Kim Humphreys when she... Or maybe she did go did Kim Humphreys. I think she went Kim think, West. Oh. There was a lot of stuff out there of Kim West, wasn't there? Aren't the kids Kardashian West? She, she yeah. was a Kim Kardashian West. She hyphenated. Yeah. So then she could just drop oh, it once yeah. she got rid of him. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, you, I guess you can understand it. If you're famous in your own right, then you don't want to yeah. lose that profile. Mm. Nicole, what's the answer Good to morning. all of those questions? <laughs> Change it. Change it. I could not wait to change it. We got married, and as soon as we got back from honeymoon, I was like, bang, straight into births, deaths, and marriages, changing it everywhere I possibly could. Um, so I went from a 10 letter Dutch surname, Van Leeuwen. Yeah. V A N space L E U W E N. No one could ever understand the space. No. No one could ever understand the U and the W next to each other. <laughs> or they would put Lewin like Cape Lewin. Or, you, you know, even after like six years at high school, no one got it right. <laughs> so my husband's uh, name is Diaz, like Cameron Diaz. Oh, easy. So I went from. Ten letters to four. Thanks. And now they say, oh, you you know, Cameron. And I'm like, yep, yep, she's our cousin. She paid for the wedding. She's great. Yep. yep. You know. <laughs> but, oh, I just could not wait to change it. Yeah. 
It was great. I, I've always thought, Nicole, it would be excruciating to go through life with a really complicated surname yeah. and having to spell it out every single time. You'd go through a routine, though, wouldn't you, Nicole, where you knew someone was about to ask, you this routine of things you'd say every time to make sure people knew exactly what was going on? 100%. I automatically spelt it. As soon as I said, you know, someone asked, what's your name? I just automatically went into the spelling. Yeah. Automatically. Automatically yeah. just recited the entire alphabet. <laughs> and then they haven't yeah, drifted over. You're like, D-A-S. D-I-A. And like, yeah, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's habit. It's habit. Yeah. But, you know, even on some forms, my maiden name wouldn't fit in those little boxes. <laughs> And it would just spill over, and it was just, oh, yeah, no. Nah. Right, I mean, it has a great story because in Dutch it means the lion, like powerful, mm. like a lion yeah. or lioness. But, you know, yeah, no, I was just over it after 20 something years of yeah. spelling it. Just, yeah. Fair enough. Thank yeah. you so no. much for your call, Nicole. That's all well and good, but um, not Cameron's sister, though. Nah. No. Nah. Much better bringing Diaz. You're not Darren Hayes' cousin either. I certainly am, so. No. <laughs> so, yeah. Or Sean Hayes' brother. Mm. Whichever one. Maybe there's three of us. Maybe. Yeah, who knows? Maybe you should hyphenate your name Hazy. What's it? The Andrew Hayes Goonan. Goose, okay. It's definitely something we could think about. Yep. Watch this space. Mm. Maybe our children could be Hayes Goonans. They could be Hayes Goonans. Mm. Maybe <laughs> little goonies. Little goon bags. <laughs> information overload when you wake up on a Monday morning. So to drill down on the biggest news stories for the past 24 hours, we have Abby in the newsroom. What's going on today? Good morning. So John Paul Drake, who is the one of the bosses of the Drake supermarkets, he's gone viral again. Yeah. Most people would know that he started putting up videos calling out shoplifters back in the day. And it's such a huge business. I can't remember what the figures are, but shoplifters in, in across supermarkets, more people are doing it now because cost of living and it's just getting out of control. But he's saying it's not. He's saying it's not people on the bones of their you-know-what. He's saying it's just brazen thieves. Well, there's that, yes, as well. I know some people, though, who just refuse to pay the amount that's on the ticket. Yeah, right. So it goes in the bottom of the bag. Um, but he's called out these two people who've basically been going through shops through the northern suburbs. They've got this big box with a, a, a bow on top. So it looks like you're walking around with this big box, like this big present. And basically what they're doing is they're, there's a, another person walking around with meat and all these groceries and things like that. And then the woman's coming over with this big box. She's placing the big box into the other trolley mm. and making it look and putting it over the the goods in there so then and then walking out with it yeah so they, they look like they're walking around with just this massive present in their trolley but it's not it's all meat and and food yeah so yes he's taken to social media there's a few bits i can't really play it because obviously the language is a bit uh, colorful for radio but it's yeah it's really interesting if you head to their instagram page but they're basically putting a call out to try and find these people and and stop them so I think I told you um, a couple of months ago, I was just in my local supermarket and I just watched a guy grab one of those electric toothbrushes off the top shelf. Oh, they're expensive. And he just like literally didn't even try to conceal it in his jacket. He just like walk, was walking out with it. Was People it was just... the jacket green? Was it me? Because <laughs> I look at those toothbrushes sometimes like, I'd like a, a backup electric toothbrush, but they are very Oh, expensive. you want a backup one, do you, Del? Yeah, because I, I wear them through them quite quickly. Wait till they go half price. Yeah, they do. Do they, they do that? They quite often mm. go half price. Right, okay. Yeah. Also, what do you mean you wear it out? That means you're pushing too hard. Yeah, I know. That's not good. Yeah. I, my, um, my gums have uh, recessed over the journey because receded. I pushed Receded. Receded. <laughs> 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 no, no. My gums have had recess. Yeah. <laughs> I give them a little bag of chips <laughs> um, and, and a fruit box. And a popper. <laughs> Here you go. Here's a teeth chat. Do you use pipe cleaners between? Do you have holes in between? Uh, what's a pipe cleaner? Like a little, a little tiny pipe cleaner, and you use that to push the food that gets stuck because that's why your gums are receding. No, I floss. Okay, well, yes. you should use your pipe cleaners as well. Okay, well, I'll get some education off you off here because I don't know what a pipe cleaner is. Oh, okay. Do you know what a pipe cleaner is? Yes, Tony? I do. But okay. anyway, that that is definitely an off air conversation. Yes. Right. Um, I don't <laughs> even know how to segue from pipe cleaners <laughs> to Natasha Ryan. Just do your best. Okay, so this case is unbelievable. Can you remember, you're probably a bit young, but Natasha Ryan was the girl in the cupboard. So um, 25 years ago, Hazy, she disappeared and police and her family had 
presume that she had been murdered by this guy um, who was like a prolific serial killer, uh, Leonard John Fraser. So everyone thought she died. And then the police went round to her boyfriend's place. So she was only 14 and he was 21 at the time. And she, she was hiding in the cupboard. What, for how long? Five years. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So she, five years. She was off the radar. That anyway, is outrageous. he then went to jail for perjury because he lied to police and said, I don't know where she is. Yeah. And she was found guilty of causing a false police investigation and fined $1,000. So she was in on it as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was complicit. Wow. So, I mean, how can you be happy to let your parents and your family think you've yeah, been murdered? That's... Well, she was only 14 and he was 21, so yeah. you wonder what else was going on. Mm. But, yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, they have found her dead on a golf course in Rockhampton. Wow. So another big police search over the weekend, and yeah, so she's dead at forty. Mm. What a very sad tale, isn't it? Mm. Pretty awful. sad life, really. Mm. Yeah. So there That's you unbelievable. Go. Mm. Um, so there you go. That's your post snooze news. Let's talk QR codes, shall we? Mm. I know. That's my reaction as well. I hate them. Do you know why, Jodes? Because you and me, we've got a bit of age behind us, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but this, in my eyes, is good news. Some restaurants are ditching QR codes over the fear of appearing tacky after the new age technological feature boomed in popularity post-pandemic as a way to limit the transfer of germs. Not only do restaurants fear QR codes are tacky, but customers have expressed frustration over how difficult QR code menus can be to navigate, especially, and this is us, for older generations. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Well, at the risk of sounding ancient, I can't read them off my phone. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got, I've got some decent-sized font going on. <laughs> so, so we, yeah, I know. Have you got that large font on the front of your phone? Oh, my You're gosh. Like... That's next level. <laughs> but when you do the whole, oh, I forgot, where's my bloody glasses? Yeah. These damn QR codes. When I see a QR code, I instantly become angry. Yeah. Because there's a good chance I'm going to go to a space where it doesn't make sense and my wife car is so good at it and I'm going to get angry and it sets me off in a bad mood and all of a sudden I'll probably order the wrong thing as well. And it's just <laughs> I genuinely enough. will just pass my phone mm. to my husband and go, just read it. Yeah. Just tell me what's on it. Yes. And he's brain's working a thousand, a thousand miles uh, an hour. So many cogs all yeah. happening at once. He's a very fast talker too. So he'll be like, oh, do you want the chicken fajitas or do you want the chicken burritos or whatever? Do you want a Coke or do you want a glass of wine? Yeah. And you just say yes because mm. you don't understand what he's saying. All of a sudden, you're eating pancakes for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> you just rolled off something random. Some of these old school things that have been phased out, I miss. Mm. I really miss. You know, one thing which I don't think kids these days will have the joy of owning. What? And that is hard copy concert tickets. Oh, yeah. That's they're collector's items. Oh, yeah. Because now it's all through the interwebs and all QR codes <laughs> and all <laughs> that riffraff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never thought about that. Do you know what I miss? I miss the CD Discmans. Yep. You know, when you walk around, you've got your little headphones with the big, like, the round things on your ear. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd hold your Discman and you'd just feel cool. You thought you were cool. <laughs> you thought I, you were so damn cool. It's a cruise around with the Discman thinking I was Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine myself with a notepad just scribbling some lyrics on the bus oh, downtown, God. eight mile in Detroit. Yeah. Yeah, I miss as well. Um, well, I think a lot of people miss interaction at supermarkets. Oh, yeah. A lot oh, of supermarkets now, there's no interaction with, um, is it checkies? Is that what you call them? Uh, checkout chicks. Like, check it, like checkout chicks and checkout yeah. boys? Yeah. Is that the thing? Checkout boys? <laughs> 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 but self-serve checkouts now Hate it. are dominating supermarkets. I hate everything about it, particularly when you've got more than, like, one bag full of items and you look at I don't know, same thing with the QR codes. I get so mad. Yeah. I'm like, I just, I need, I've got a trolley full here. I need yeah. someone to help me. 100%. Mm. These new bits of technology that are just getting in our, uh, I swear when old, I'll pass me that sheet. What's it got there? I'll pass my glasses there, Joe. <laughs> now that's a joke. That was a joke. That's a joke. A joke. <laughs> that's a terrible joke. <laughs> Best way to start a Monday, Joe's. We've yeah. said that. Yeah. Consistently. Um, and you know who's great in this space? Oh, Newsread Abbey. Lord. Is there anyone better? No. Round of applause for Newsread Abbey. Thank you. Good morning. So on the on the blue scale this morning, where does your joke sit? No, mine's quite PG, actually. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Which All right. is interesting. Well, mine's a little bit blue. Okay. Do you want me to kick things off in yeah. a really sort of, I don't know, interesting direction? Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, why couldn't the lizard get a girlfriend? Why couldn't the lizard why? get a girlfriend? Because he had reptile dysfunction. 
<laughs> oh, poor little lizard, eh? Oh, no. uh, poor little uh, thing. It, ha- it happens, though. Happens, happens, happens to the best yeah, it of you, to doesn't it? The best it? of us lizards, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question for you. What's the difference between a piano, a can of tuna, and a tube of glue? <laughs> oh, um, to know. You can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tuna. Okay, I get it. That's real, that's real dad joke here, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that was a bit dad joke. Nice. Why didn't you ask where the glue comes in? Oh, hang on, oh, hang on. Oh, we missed where's, it. Where, where's the glue come in? People get stuck on that. <laughs> it's got a double. It's a double meaning. Well done. That's nice. Oh, God. There's different layers to that. Okay. Joke. That's nice. Isn't but it? also, you did stop. Like, you could have continued. <laughs> Okay. No, that's not how jokes work. When yeah, you don't no, but we were quiet. We were quiet, so you could have then but said the next bit. Didn't either one of you, didn't it occur to you to say, hey, what about the glue? No. <laughs> <laughs> not really. Uh, that's good, though. All right. Get you thinking. Get yeah. you thinking. That's nice. Ready? Yep. Yeah. A guy goes to an ice cream van and says, large cone, please, in quite a croaky voice. The vendor says, raspberry syrup? Yes, please, replies the bloke in the same painful-sounding voice. Crushed nuts, says the vendor. No, says the bloke pointing to his throat. Laryngitis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like this. See, good. that was very PG of That me. was very PG. <laughs> nice, well delivered. Mm. That's good. What are thoughts, Jones? Well, going? no, I just, I'm, I'm stuck on the crushed nuts bit. <laughs> just, just digesting that. Really? There you are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? We'll speak about it in this song. <laughs> Sometimes flying can be very, very fun. It can be interesting. It can be also misleading for some people. Also very much so. So the advice from one flight attendant is if you take a fancy to one of us on a flight and you think about chatting us up, please don't. Okay. Like full stop. Here's a little 101 tip how not to hit it on a flight attendant, okay? Do not hit on a flight attendant in flight during flight, whatever. Do not do that because you are making it awkward. And you know what? The flight attendant just has to be nice to you. So yeah, it's just a really uncomfortable situation and we do not like that, okay? But if you wanna shoot your shot, then your best bet is just handing your number over to the flight attendant when you are getting off that plane. Then you're not making it awkward and you're leaving it up to the flight attendant to decide whether or not she wants to text you. Oh, there you go. So if you want to shoot your shot. Shoot your shot. Um, so that was Tyra who goes by the TikTok handle at Wheels Up with Tyra and she's been a flight attendant with Delta Airlines for six years. That video has been viewed 25,000 times. Mm. Quite often like with sporting teams that travel, there must be a few of the boys that think, oh, that girl's a bit of all right. Yeah, but I, don't, I, I reckon now in this particular space with everything that's reported, mm. if you were an AFL footballer yeah. and you wanted to go down that space, mm. very risky oh. because if it doesn't work, then yeah. they're going to talk. They'd probably do a TikTok video like that saying, yeah. oh, guess what? Uh, this bloke from this football club just asked me out. Yeah. Um, shooting your shot. Shooting your shot. <laughs> have you have you ever been hit on at work? Do you know of anyone? I I, I don't think I've really been hit on at work much. Yeah. And even if I was, I wouldn't even know. Yeah. Because I'm no. not a guy that picks up on You are football. the most oblivious person <laughs> yeah. in that space when it comes to female attention. You've got no idea when someone's giving you a bit of, oh, you're a bit of all right. Absolutely. I'd be like, what are you looking at? Mm. Stop looking me up and down. Oh, is my flying done? <laughs> Selling hot dogs again. No, I know of a, I've got to be very careful. When I tell just, the story. I want you to be very careful. Okay. Uh, just choose okay. your language carefully is what I would say. Damn it, I'm not good with words at the best of times. There used to be a particular clinic yes. on North Terrace. It was located at number 275. Okay. And I think I can say this. It focused very much so on sexual health. Yes. Um, a friend of mine <laughs> uh, went in there because he needed to be, mm, in the end, educated yes. on a particular matter. Okay. So him being quite a very confident young man and perhaps thinking, yeah, I'll shoot my shot in a place where he should definitely not shoot his shot. <laughs> yes. Uh, when he finished in this particular clinic and he had some good news. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> he was also um, educated. Much more to be a, right. a much better human well, post that visit. Mm. On his way out, he thought it would be a good idea to try and shoot his shot to the receptionist. <laughs> That's right, at Clinic 275. <laughs> so, 
And Jeez, would you believe <laughs> that is the most brazen story I've ever heard isn't, in my life? Isn't it just so ridiculous? <laughs> yeah. And how do you think it finished? Uh, not well. Yeah, spot on. <laughs> <laughs> I think she looked him up and down in yeah. a really negative way and yeah. basically said, please leave. And, and, and perhaps perused his file yes. and said, oh, no thanks. But his claim was that, hey, my file's there. And as you, as we both know right now, yeah. everything is coming up well. Yeah. Everything okay. is good. Oh. I was on a flight from Adelaide back to Cairns when I was living up there. And there was a, an older gentleman who worked in the mines and he was talking to this flight attendant. Now, she was a little bit older, but she was just gorgeous. She was stunning. She just loved her job, you could just tell. Yeah. And he's, oh, so, you know, what flights, do you you know, blah, blah, blah. And you can sort of, it started off friendly, but then it was getting to the point where he clearly was trying to chat her up. Right. And she was being friendly, being friendly, and it got to that point where she's like, oh, no, I've said too much. So yeah. then... He made a comment, oh, something about, I don't know, where are you flying to next or whatever, and she basically was just, oh, we're not allowed to give out that information, you know, da-da-da. But he clearly was shooting his shot, and they probably would have been a gorgeous couple together, but she started to get uncomfortable and go, I've said too much here, um, and had to, yeah, sort of pretend that she didn't know the answer. And that would be the issue, wouldn't it, for Mm. flight attendants, 100%. It's being nice versus, Mm. hey, mate, look, I'm just being nice here. Don't take it the wrong way. That's exactly what At Will's Up With Tyra said on TikTok. Yeah. And you know to always listen to everything that At Will's Up With Tyra says. 100%. We live by that. Let's do this 13, 24, 10. Have you been hit on at work? I'm just going to put it straight out there. Have you been hit on at work, Jodes? And did you end up getting married because of it? I did. (laughs) Indeed. At the staff Christmas party. There you go. Yeah. Greg Oddie. Seemed to... He shoot... He shoot... He shoot... What was his line? Did he have a line? (laughs) No. Oh, Yeah. Well, it wasn't a line, but he just came up behind me at the Christmas party and he sort of pinched the back of my neck like yeah. that. And I was like, oh. And he, and oh, 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 boys, when they're mean to you, it means they like you. No, he yeah. was being nice. And an old turbo talker, Greg, whispered to me, hey, you want to drink over there? Do you want to go? We'll catch up for coffee over there. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, Jody went, just went, okay. Uh, okay, yes. <laughs> It's exactly how it played out. Greg's a fast talker for anyone just tuning in for the first time. Yes. Let's go to Rochelle. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, good. Did you get hit on? I did, yeah. So I was working at a service station with a truck stop at the time. Yeah. Um, And I had a truckie come in and did his transaction and we always had to say, like, do you want your receipt? Um, And he said, only if it has your number on it. Yes. Um, (laughs) I I crumpled up the receipt and put it in the bin. (laughs) (laughs) And then he left. savage, but... (laughs) And then he left with his tail between his legs. There he goes. (laughs) See ya. See you guys. Good try, though. It's tough. Thank you, Rochelle. What can you do, though, sometimes, you know? Jackie, what happened? Um, I was working in an engineering firm, and one of the workers' sons, um, attempted to hit on me for two years. He was very shy. Yeah. And he eventually dropped his number and we've now been together for 20 years, three kids, married. Oh, yes. I like that. How good is that? Yeah. Hey, good on him. Two years, two years. of trying. Like, how how brutal were you? Or were you just sort of, oh, did you just kept him going? Oh, brutal. He used to come in and say, is my, is my dad here? Come to the reception desk and say, is my dad here? And I'd play jokes him and say, he's gone home sick or he's in a meeting. <laughs> And then he'd sit there and panic because he was supposed to be picking his dad up. And <laughs> actually, he was just um, trying to talk to me. So Aww. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, uh, across the journey, when did you start to turn, Jackie? Um, the ladies I worked with would often tell me how gorgeous he was. And I would definitely, before he would come in, I'd make sure I had my makeup and looked the best I could. And um, eventually, I told his dad that I thought he was cute. And so his dad regretted that when um, he told his son, <laughs> The receptionist thinks you're cute, so he shot his shoe, is what he said before. Yeah, I was like, all right, let's do this. Oh, no, well, nice. that's amazing. Thank you, Jackie. Nice let's go to Chantel. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Have you been hit on at um, work? Yes. So I'm a florist, um, so we're often serving like men, um, obviously, and I was helping this one guy just choose an arrangement as I do. He was asking me all these questions, um, taking his time, and then when he came to buy it, um, he bought it, and then he was like, oh, but uh, these are for you. Oh, that's (laughs) nice. 
I thought you. Oh. Producer M, why? Oh, I thought you were about to say down the lines of he was buying flowers for his wife or his girlfriend, and yeah. then. But this is nice. So the whole time it was flowers for you. Yeah, I know, and that was it. And then he just left. <laughs> Chantel, I, I've often wondered this about florists. Do you quite often have sort of husbands or wives like buying flowers for people that aren't their like wife or husband? Do you know what I mean? We have had situations where that has happened before. Right. <laughs> Especially on Valentine's. Oh, oh no. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> that's sad. Oh, no. oh, just quickly before we move on, um, Producer Emily, what's wrong with that? Don't you like love? I love love. We all love love. But I just think that's so cringe. Well, it's not cringe. It, it, it could be awkward if you weren't ready for it. But don't you think that's lovely? On paper, that's lovely. No, I don't know. Oh. Just um, not for me. Sorry, Gus. Let's take one more, Lana. Good morning. Thanks, yeah, so uh, I'm a nurse and um, I went in to give somebody some medication and he said, oh, great, my nurse is here for a bed bath. <gasps> and I said, Mate, you're in for a tonsillectomy. You can get up and have a shower. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness me. I can't believe that line didn't work on you, Lana. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> no, not oh, at all. Lana, thank you so much. <laughs> you wonder how many times nurses have heard lines like that. Yeah. Oh, there she is. Oh, can I just get one sponge bath? Thanks. <laughs> oh, not it's, funny. But seriously. Yeah. No, you can't. You, can't. <laughs> you absolute sicko. All right. Time to get stuck into your sweet spot. Uh, uh, how long did you work on that for? Oh, weeks. Uh, weeks. Oh, maybe months. Okay. So, to bring you up to speed, we spoke to Will Rayner from the Royal Adelaide Show last week. And Prince of a man. Basically, what they've done, because I'm obsessed with frittatas, they have created a frittata category for the Royal Show just for us. But the catch is we need at least 20 people to register mm. to take part. Just 20 people who love their frittatas as much as I do. Yeah. Uh, no registrations yet, but that's okay. okay. No, I'm not really sure. I'm not well, sure. I'm no, not sure we've where only just started. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, there's a bit of love on the socials for my frittata. Is that correct news, Red Abbey? Yeah, there is. Okay. A few people are like, Go off, Jodes. And I had a look at the comments on the Royal Adelaide show as well because they posted it last week and you've, you've, there's some backing there. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Okay. Um, so if we can get 20 people to register, the winner will take home the bragging rights of being a frittata king or queen and $500. Right. $500. Bucks. And you're going to compete. Sure am. And I'm going to compete. You sure are. Do you know what would be what would be? You cannot get Cara to make it for you. You no, cannot. No, I've got news for Abby. What? She's on my team. Oh, you're doing it together, are you? Yeah. Yeah, we've recruited. Yeah. Interesting. We've recruited, so yeah, it's very interesting. Full well. credit to the boys. What, okay. Yeah, spot on there, Abs. Well, hang spot on. on. That's, that's already one, two, three people that have entered, mm-hmm. so that's good. We just need 17 more. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing, though, Joe. Can you imagine a world where we compete against each other for the rights to have the best frittata Frittata. of the show and you lose? (laughs) Can you imagine how devastating this is? I can't. I can't envisage that will happen. Oh, my gosh. Entries close on June 21st and to enter you just need to email entries at adelaideshowground.com.au. Come on. Come on, all you bakers out there. I mean, is there a frittata fraternity? There is a frittata fraternity. What's it like? What are they like? We're amazing. I bet you are. We just lean on each other for frittata support. Loose bunch, though. Mm. Tell you what. From what I can see as well, and I don't know too much about frittatas because I sort of get them confused with omelettes and sometimes quiches as well. But the vegetables that you use in your frittata, they're big. They're big chunks. Yeah, do you know? Yeah, well, there's a secret to that, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. What? Just lazy cutting? Is that it? <laughs> no. No, you have to bake them in the oven first. Oh, okay. You can't just chuck a whole chunk of sweet potato in a frittata and expect it to be soft. Oh, I was putting mine in the microwave. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was your problem. Every time. Mm. All right, Nova Play, get registering and let's have a frittata off. Why not? That's what it's all about.